Thank you, Mr. McLean. Welcome everyone here again. It's uh, good to be here again after the feast and after the time in between. Uh, my topic that I chose today was had to do with courage, uh, the courage it takes to, to live the lives that we have. I hope everyone did have a good week and is enjoying their Sabbath day today. I noticed it's nice and bright and sunny compared to the, the gloominess and the rain we had most of the week. Uh, my week was pretty good, but it was a little bit rough. Uh, last Sunday was uh, what well, would have been uh, my mother's birthday uh, back in July. She passed away. So leading up to last Sunday, my siblings were calling or messaging and wanting to know what we were going to do. And then the day came and then I have to work through my week after that. So it was a little bit rough. Um, but the lead up to that was uh, also the fact that I had to concentrate and finish up and, and give my sermonette this week. Uh, so, yes, that makes me a little bit nervous. That makes me a little bit trepidatious. But leading up to that, we also had a, a, a decent feast, a really good feast. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the best feast ever, but uh, I got to travel back and forth and, and learn all the ins and outs of I-74. 74 this uh, that feast I traveled back and forth four different times because I'm at home taking care of my dad and going down and visiting services uh, during the day and and coming back at night to, to take care of him but it was a good feast I had a lot of good friends that I met up with uh, people that I knew people that I, I saw and love and, and I got to see my grandchildren playing and having fun at the feast also but uh, there's a lot of extra stress, stress on me, stress on my family for doing that type of things. But I'm able to cope with this type of thing because of Christ. In John 16, 33, let's turn there. Sixteen thirty-three. Christ told his disciples, These things I have spoken unto you, that in ye, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be glad, uh, be, good, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Because Christ has overcome the world, even these small setbacks we may have, these tribulations we have, Jesus overcame the world for us so that we can cope with them, so that we can be there for the, for the, the people we are there, they're there to take care of. We must continue on in it, even though Christ overcame the world. Christ has saved us. The world provides all kinds of trials for us, which are given to each of us, and each of our trials are different. Through our trials, the fruits of the Spirit can give us courage. Some of these are our love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Through love, love for one another, we can show patience for those who are around us and those that we care about. The kindness that we need to give and the patience that we need to have. Peter's love for Jesus gave him courage. In Matthew, the 14th chapter, Matthew, not Mark, Matthew. Peter and, and the disciples are on the boat, and Christ is, has stayed behind, and he decided to take a jaunt and, and catch up with them in the boat. So he's walking on the water toward the boat, and as he's walking, the the disciples are frightened because they feel it might be a spirit, a, a ghost of some sort. And so as they are approaching, as he is approaching them, and they are nervous, they cry out in fear. Uh, but uh, Jesus tells them to, you know, to, be, to take courage. And Peter says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. We must also have the courage to do what God has asked of us. 
God will always be there for us to help us to move forward. When God calls us to be places, when God calls us to do things, calls our spirit to be able to move and, and be there for others, we must have the faith and the courage to be able to do what is asked of us. This reminded me of another feast that we had as a family, the feast of 2012. The feast of 2012, uh, we went to the Dells uh, and it was a, a, a wonderful feast. But we had to have major courage for this particular one because the, the previous fall, as I was finishing up my degree, I was let go from where I worked. Uh, about uh, just before uh, November of that year, I was let go, finished my semester. And so at that point in time, I was still out of work. I had one more semester to go of, of college for my associate's degree and no money coming in except for the unemployment. But all throughout that time, God kept us safe in the house that we had just moved into the previous September. We never missed a house payment, never missed a car payment, never had any problems keeping the lights on. The money was always there. The, the help was always coming out of the woodworks. But we had to have the courage. When we took off to go to the feast, we took off with virtually nothing. We had a place to stay, and that was all taken care of. But we didn't know what we were going to be able to do, how we were going to be able to celebrate and, and keep God's feast. But again, as we showed up, we had so many friends there. We had so many things going on. It was hard to schedule everything, and, and it was like the, the loaves and fishes. There was so much left over and so much to give and so much that happened. It was amazing. But it took courage, courage to step out, courage to go and do as God called for us to do to go and attend the feast as he commands. This also led me to uh, re, uh, look into a book, Wild at Heart, by John Eldridge. This is a group of stories that talks about uh, men and, and what happens to them as they age and grow up and mature. And it tends to be that as we age and, and, and grow and, and become adults, that we tend to settle down. We tend to take the safe path. We tend to say, okay, well, I'm here. I'm in a safe position. If I go off and do something that's not what the world wants me to do, that's a risk. And we have to be able to be prepared to take a risk. We settle down. We seek a more secure path, like I said. And that is good to try and be secure and safe. But we still must have the faith and the courage to go wherever God leads us. We must do the things and lead the path and walk where God has, has called for us to go. I want to go ahead and close with one final verse. It's in 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. And it has to do with David talking to his son Solomon. 1 Chronicles. Come on. 1 Chronicles 28, and in verse 20. And in verse 20, it says, And David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the services of the house of the Lord. He told he was not rebuking his son, but giving him courage and giving him bolstering to tell him that God will be with him. His God will be with him to help him to build the, the temple as, as he needed to. And that is the same type of courage we have to have. We have to walk that path and be that way. So we must have courage. Please have courage to do the work. And have a wonderful rest of your Sabbath.